Hi, everybody. Welcome to Queers and Soaps. I'm Tommy, and tonight I'm joined by Eric, a.k.a. Letitia. <laughs> Letitia, yes. That's me. And we are continuing our Bowen Hope 1983 coverage, and you'll find out real soon who Letitia is, so I'll roll the credits and we'll get right into it. <laughs> Okay, so Bo is on the mend. He's still in his room, all a little banged up. Um, um my first line is Bo still on the mend, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of funny. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> um he doesn't seem to be like lethargic. He's just, you know, bruised. Um Maybe I just haven't been paying attention, but um, but Hope's hair seemed bigger. Yeah, it like, changed. It did change. <laughs> um, yeah. I liked it, but I was just like, huh, her hair changed, I think. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Danny brings him a cane. And at first I'm like, I don't think he needs it, because he stood up and was like walking around in the room fine. Yeah, I guess maybe for long distances. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, there was a lot of I feel like innuendo, like sexual innuendo between Bo and Hope in these clips. Some yeah. things that just like were not sexy at all. I'm like, that's sexy. <laughs> but, all right. <laughs> but, um, they're basically like, I want you, I want you, but we can't. Well, more Bo says we can't or whatever. And right. she's kind of like, she literally, I think this is a direct quote, is like, if you want it, come and get it. And he was just <laughs> like, I'm not in the right shape or whatever to like follow through on it. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, meanwhile, down downstairs at Shenanigans, the Vipers know that Bo is not out of town and that he's staying at Shenanigans. <laughs> yeah, and they got plans. So they decided to smoke him out. By I guess setting a fire in the kitchen. Did, was there a fire, or did they literally just smoke bomb the place? I couldn't tell. I didn't see any fire. I, I didn't see any fire, but I feel like they said there was a fire because they said there was damage. Maybe it was just smoke damage. Yeah, maybe. I don't know, but there was like no sign of like ambulance or anything, right? Right. What was there? Um, I heard sirens. I don't know if it was police or a fire department. Oh, okay. Um. But everybody in shenanigans runs out. All the people in the apartments above shenanigans run out. This is when um, Bo gets to use his cane. Uh, <laughs> Breaks the cane into action. Him and Danny and Danny get into a fight with the Vipers. These uh, these might have been the Vipers that stabbed him. One of them is, I think. Yeah, it was good. Uh, it was a quick fight, too. Yeah. So I even thought it was kind of going to go on for 15 minutes, but it didn't. It was like two minutes. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I thought it was going to be because because I thought you know like this was it, like the you know the finale of the Vipers. But I don't know. No, do they hang around? I was getting frustrated because we keep hearing about Pete, and I'm like, what are we going to see, Pete? <laughs> like, come on. Um, but yeah, so those that's Vipers. The same, that's the same about Liz. Like we hear about Liz. Liz, 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 Liz. We have. I don't think we've seen her once in any of these clips that we watched. And this is what four. <laughs> so right. We watched about it's what like ninety clips or thirty six <laughs> clips that we watched. <laughs> right. <laughs> seen that spot. <laughs> Liz has been mentioned, and Pete has been mentioned, and we haven't seen him not once. But you know what? Storyline's still easier to follow than Roman and Marlena. <laughs> oh, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, like they were cutting some crucial things out. I feel like with the Roman and Marlena stuff, like I don't yeah. even know. Although there are moments where I'm just like, oh uh, yeah, that's where you decided to cut it off. But okay, <laughs> but right? it usually picks up with the the storyline. Mm -hmm. Um, so Bo, I don't know what's going on. I guess Eugene is a suspect for Renee's murder, and he's in hiding. Oh, I can read something about that. 
Um, oh, but... and for those who don't know, Letitia is Eugene's cousin. She's a little um, eccentric. She has a lot of animals. She actually has a pet lion. <laughs> yes, the pet lion. What was it? Oh, yeah, she had a picture of her here. <laughs> with yeah. the lion. <laughs> with with Romulus. <laughs> Romulus, yes, thank you. I, I don't think I wrote it, but I, I wanted to say that. Yeah. Um, he looks like he's definitely drugged in this picture. Like he is, he's well, passed out. In the scenes where Obviously. both of them see her, he literally just falls over. And I was like, I literally, when you said that, I was like, that lion's sedated. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, lions, I lions were harmed in the production. <laughs> well, I was just gonna say, I don't know what like the um the pet rights or like animal cruelty like rules were back in 1983, but I feel like they were not what they are today. <laughs> right. They probably sedated him. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll read this uh, real quick. Soon after Renee's murder, nurse Kelly Chase, who had evidence of Alex's connection to Stefano and some of the killings, was found dead. Eugene, thinking the Bradford curse hmm. was still at work. We heard about her. Remember when you were like, did two people die? Renee and her? We heard about Kelly. He, yeah, yeah. Went to Haiti to find answers. While there, he and Trista got married in a romantic ceremony, but Eugene was grief-stricken when she was found murdered. But that's not true, because she got stabbed first and died later, so yeah. whatever. I guess it, it doesn't have time for that in this book. <laughs> <laughs> also holding a black feather. Back in Salem, Gwen was attacked, escaped unharmed, but a, a black raven's feather was found at her bedside. Suspicion fell on Eugene, and police were after him. But his eccentric cousin, Letitia, who had a raven as a pet, speaking of raven, um, took him in. So I can't go any further, because I don't know what's going to happen in the next set of clips. So. <laughs> this so, is pretty, um, like, direct. Letitia has, like odd like little trinkets all over her house and she has like a giant sarcophagus in her living room and that's where right. Eugene's hiding <laughs> and we didn't see eugene once right because he was already in there yeah he was already in there yeah he was uh, in there so she's talking to this thing and i'm like i guess he's in there <laughs> i was laughing because at one point she takes a liking to roman and she makes him take her out to lunch just so she could say she doesn't <laughs> know where eugene is like he i guess he keeps asking her and she won't say anything until they go out to lunch and then Hope runs into them. And she like flat out asks Hope, does the cop fool around? <laughs> <laughs> she wants a piece of Roman. Who doesn't? Yeah. Every time Hope she wants she said it a lot. Every time she says he'll fool around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she wants she wants to bang him. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> um and at one point she like wonders how Bo is in bed and hopes to get so like cagey and she's like, oh, I wouldn't know. And then she goes, oh, you're a virgin. Oh, uh, and it was like a big thing. Like Hope is embarrassed and she like ran off and I was like, Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Hope's like, I gotta go. <laughs> we don't speak about my virginity. Right. Um, <laughs> Bo and Hope also have a conversation about her being over Roman. She just feels awkward around him. But, um, he actually says, you know, I think I believe you now. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I still care about him, and I always will, but yeah, you know, she knows it can never happen. Um, so she ends, because she was staying with Bo the whole time, and she was just telling Doug and Julie she was helping a friend, and she'd come home when it was over. She, now that the, um, the Viper, well, two of the Vipers were arrested, um, he sends her home, and he offers to ride her on his bike, even though he's still bruised and battered still right and uh she says she'll drive it now that she wrote it one time um, <laughs> and he offers to go in as like like visual proof that he was hurt and she was helping and she was like no i want them to believe me without proof so he's like you really are growing up <laughs> yeah so I feel like when he says like little girl and stuff like that it still bothers me i don't <laughs> think that's romantic at all <laughs> or um, like sweet pea sweet pea is better than like little girl I feel um, like a lot of people are commenting on the fact that Bo and Hope like each other or at least that Hope likes Bo um, right. Julie mentions it a lot and she doesn't like it um, there was a scene where 
Julie and um, Tom Horton, her grandfather, mm, yeah. were, I guess, having lunch. And I like that scene because just hearing her say grand grandpa, grandpa, is that what she called him or grandfather, grandpa? Um, just hearing yeah, that yeah, and like having him be around, I was like, I was like, oh, even though I wasn't watching it back then, it just gave me like the warm fuzzies. <laughs> I remember I mentioned like last time I was like, oh, Julie, they made Julie kind of a shrew, like in certain years. Um, watching these, I feel like, okay, she's always been that way. <laughs> <laughs> because she's very shrewish in, in the things I'm watching. I'm like, she's just very, I don't know, I guess I, I guess I never realized I'd never seen enough of her character in the past to really know. Like I always, like you said, like we talked about they usually come for a wedding, a funeral, you know, here and there. Yeah. So that's all I knew him as. So you don't have time to be a shrew in those situations, you know? I've seen some so of her in the, er, in the early 90s when her and Doug, I guess, are divorced for I don't know what reason. But um, Spoiler alert. I didn't know they got divert, divorced at one point. Well, I don't know why they got divorced, so I'm not really spoiling the whole thing. But there, <laughs> he, he's on the show and he's not. And I'm kidding. It's been like 40 years ago. <laughs> Like with Cruz the Deception and everything. Yeah, and I yeah. feel like they were chem testing her and Victor. And honestly, I was here for it. I was like, all right, Victor and Julie, I like it. <laughs> but then I think Don came back and that kind of squashed it. Right. <laughs> um, but I kind of liked her there because she wasn't really as shrewish, at least to my memory. And I don't mind her being as shrew. I mean, if that's how her character is, that's how her character is. Like, I, you know, I like that it's. Like, you know, I like it better that way because if that's just how it's she is. A, it's <laughs> such an extreme from how she started out. Right. Like, bad girl that's shoplifting and just causing trouble and like sleeping with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and can we talk about these fantasies? <laughs> um, so okay. So, oh, yeah. so well, well, before we get to the fantasies, apparently Tony has invited everybody in town to go horseback riding. He must have a lot of horses because he invited oh, okay. uh, Bo Hope. Sandy, um, who was there? Was Gwen, Chris, Chris, uh, Melissa. So, uh, Melissa wants to go to the greenhouse and, um, Bo and Hope go to the stables. And, yeah. oh, Bo has his cane still. And he does this mm -hmm. weird, like, he like lifts it up, and all of a sudden it's like this dance fantasy with him and Hope. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it sure is. And I couldn't tell if it was his fantasy or her fantasy, because I felt like she was in it also. I'm like, did they really dance? And this was just the fantasy they were both having. I think that was both their fantasies. Because I think it showed like her and then him. like They were both kind of thinking it. But then uh -huh. the other one that happens later, I think, was just hers. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. With the ring? Yeah. That was just her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The ring. Um... But uh, after the fantasy's over, I was a, a little surprised because she flat out was like, I think I'm falling in love with you to him. Like, yeah. It wasn't fake. <laughs> that wasn't a fantasy. Like she flat out said it. I was like, oh, okay, we're here. <laughs> I was, you know, it's funny because they do that so many times now. Like maybe they didn't do that back then where they dicked around with you like that. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I was, I thought the same thing. I'm like, ah, this is probably a fantasy too. You know, it's just not yeah. gonna. She's just not gonna be like, "Oh, I love you," or "I'm falling yeah. in love with you," right? Isn't that what she said? Um, yeah, I'm falling in love. Yeah, with you. I'm like, all right. When's it gonna like, you know, not be happening? I'm like, oh shit. Okay, all right. She really did. <laughs> um. So, just to rewind a little bit. So, um, Tony was called when there was the fire at Shenanigans, which made me think. Does Tony own shenanigans or a piece of it? He does. Um, yeah. But in the background, we got to see, I don't know if you noticed, a woman. That was Daphne. That was his mother. Daphne. Uh, didn't. Um, didn't but we'll see more. She's, she's on in 1984, so you'll get to see her. Um, okay. Oh, she brings up to Bo that while he was sleeping, that he mentioned Megan again. Right. And he kind of like doesn't want to talk about it. So Megan's getting mentioned quite a bit, but she's still months away. But I like that they were yeah. like seed for like pretty much from the beginning. Right. 
And he also got weird after she said she was falling in love with him. He was just like, you don't know me. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> like, whatever, Bo. Get over yourself. <laughs> um, I get it, though. I get it. Like, for story, and they want to make you suffer a little bit. Whatever. It's cool. <laughs> so, Bo has taken an interest in Liz getting out of jail or like the conditions of the jail and Neil, which is her husband at the time, um, Neil Curtis is like right. funding this project. So him and Danny pretend to be like movie producers, um, wanting to do a documentary about jail life. <laughs> I was very interested in this storyline too, but and I feel like it's pretty major. Like it seems like it's a major storyline, which is why I thought it was funny that they talk about Liz, talk about Liz, and we we didn't see her at this point, and then we finally did. You know, the last couple clips, I think. Unfortunately, any clip I've ever seen of this, it's very choppy. The video quality is bad. It goes from black and white mm -hmm. to color. It's like shaky. Um, but what I have, from what I have seen, it seems that Liz has been being bullied by other inmates. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the warden is kind of letting it happen for some reason. Yeah. Um, and I was hoping we were going to see it, but the warden is played by Do uh, Darlene Connolly. Oh, so we didn't get to Darlene yet. I don't think we're gonna in these, if because they kept saying the warden, and I'm like, I know who the warden is, just show her, but they didn't. <laughs> I was actually surprised yeah, like, about Liz. <laughs> I didn't, I don't think I saw anything about this storyline in um, this book, either. I don't... It must not last long, because I know... But it felt like the, all the clips were based on it. Most of them, after, you know, like, back, back and forth between Letitia and Eugene, and... I know that the jailbreak part for Liz is like November of 83. I don't think it goes into December. Oh, okay. I and think even it, Liz had... When uh, we saw Liz in jail, she had a fantasy... Wasn't she fantasizing being that? Rescued, of being rescued, yeah. <laughs> of being res and then she's like, maybe they're rescuing me. That was a little weird. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> well, because earlier they had mentioned, because we didn't see it, that as they were being escorted out, remember when they first got denied uh, permission to do the documentary? Yeah. They went back, I think, to either Roman or Doug, and they said, we we ran into Liz as we were being escorted out. I was like, and you would have been proud of her. She played along, like she didn't know us, like, so maybe it'll be good. Um. So I guess her seeing them made her start fantasizing about getting out. <laughs> I'm guessing um, that was in the clips that we didn't have. Yeah. That they bumped into her in. Yeah. But, but um, I, I, feel, I didn't feel like we missed much. Like, I feel like that was the only thing. And they talked about it, so it really didn't feel like we missed anything. Yeah. So what I noticed, it seems like the, the attire for the inmates in this jail is, like, khakis and, like, a button-down shirt versus, like, yeah. orange. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um I'm, I'm so, kind of disappointed in myself because I wasn't gonna be Letitia. I forgot I was gonna be prison ladies. <laughs> you were gonna be prison ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I put I every time like I talked about them, I'm like prison ladies did this, <laughs> prison ladies did that. Well, we actually did see Pete. He didn't speak though. Um Bo and Letitia went for a walk with Robulus as if they were walking a dog, but they were walking a lion. And right. Pete was in hiding on the docks in the shadows. Uh, I think I did see that, but I didn't know who that was. Yeah, that was Pete. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what's happening. But... All right. um, nice. Does your book say anything about the kidnapping with, with Melissa? Um, yeah, but it might give stuff away. Um, on just a second. It really shouldn't uh, matter, because, like, honestly, there isn't much for us to watch now, so... If... Yeah, there probably won't. Oh, okay, it might be in the thing. Yeah. I have, when Melissa found Pete Jennings stealing canned goods from the pantry at Shenanigans, he took her hostage and left town, but a snowstorm stranded them alone at the Horton Farm. Mm -hmm. After 
After a hostage drama with police, Pete was arrested for kidnapping. While together at the farm, Pete had confided, confided his troubled youth to Melissa and she, she grew fond of him. He was eventually released in Chris's custody. Mm -hmm. That's all I got. That sounds like a good place to stop with that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's actually right before 1984. So, yeah, it's probably like the last. Yeah, that sounds like a nice month or two. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's nice. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. The book's good for something. <laughs> so, is your book um, is it broken up like by yearly summaries, and then it does it just yeah. like character storylines? It has uh, everything in it. Um, it's it's got characters like what they did. Like, do you just go to the year, and then you get to like pick which character you want to read? Yeah, it has every year in it up until ninety five, I think. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, it's really cool. And it has like little thing like it'll have the behind the scenes look. Mm -hmm. It has villains. And here's oh wait, hold on. Can this I see one's the, cover? In the This one's in the bad girl section. <laughs> Megan. <laughs> <laughs> so she coming out of the cover? Yeah. Can you see it? Okay. Cause I tried looking for it on Amazon, and I, w I found some, but I wasn't sure which one it was. That's when I and sent you those, the book that I, I always bring up. <laughs> and for those listening, it's a 30th anniversary celebration. What year are we in? 60-something now? 59. Is it 59? Oh, I feel like we're in the 60s. Yeah, November. I, I lose track. Clearly. It shows like all the weddings in here. Um, triangles, lovers. Yeah, it's really cool. It's a great book. But yeah. the, I mean, the years are very basic. Like, like this whole Liz storyline, I didn't see it in there. It just said like Liz goes to prison. And that's about it. Like it doesn't say Bo tried to get her out or anything. Yeah, I really don't um, know why. Like we heard mentions that she shot Marie. I feel like she has amnesia at some point. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't really know because I feel like she has amnesia because she doesn't remember her relationship with Neil. What year are we in? 83? Yeah. And they have a child together, Noelle, which is um, Sarah Horton's biological sister. So here's a Liz thing. It says, Liz slipped into Neil's bed and then accidentally shot his estranged wife, Marie thinking Marie was an intruder. Okay. And that That's was just this one that had a little picture of her. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know. Hmm. Um, but do I see anything else? Mm, I have in the, I don't know what Malay is. M-E-L-E-E. -E. In the Malay, Liz was, sh Liz was shot she recovered, but her injury brought her on, on a bout of amnesia that made oh. her think she was married to Don, who was currently with Maggie. Yes. That's tricky. That's what I remember. Okay. She must and, get it back early on in what we're about to watch, because I don't remember it lasting that long. Did we see something about Roman getting arrested? Um, He gets accused of being the killer all right so this is I, I can lead up to that hold on so sandy and marlena saw a man murder a woman named daisy mm -hmm. shocked they had to admit they had seen roman mm -hmm. reluctantly abe arrested him even even though roman vehemently insisted he was being framed marlena stood by her husband in spite of the growing evidence against him oh Right. Yeah, and then I think he goes he goes on the run and um Bo helps him. So this kind of adds a little bit of drama to Bo and Hope because Bo has a lot of things going on that Hope doesn't really know about and he can't tell right. her because then she's an accessory to it because they're not exactly legal. Like because yeah. because Roman's a fugitive technically, like he's an accessory and he doesn't want Hope to be involved. So he Hope takes it as you're pushing me away, you're not letting me in. There's another woman, <laughs> like, like right, even right. So you, found you, like a woman's like shirt, and she got the wrong idea. 
So you think that's the reason he's kind of keeping hope at a distance? It's not like he's just like, you know, scared of his feelings. Well, yeah. Also, she's underage, so she's only 17. Right. So that's the 18. She's very proud of that. Yeah. <laughs> two months and two months, because I think we're at Halloween. <laughs> we're um, at Halloween. Bo moves from upstairs of shenanigans down to the basement of shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought that was funny. Which ends up, I think, being his place for a while. Because that's, okay. that's the apartment, if you want to call it, that I remember. Or studio. Right. Um, I also think that maybe um, Patch and Kayla live there at some point. Maybe after Bo and Hope leave. Oh, nice. Because it looks familiar. Um, yeah, Hope Hope ends up getting involved in the, in the Liz thing because she snoops. Um, she's supposed to be sleeping at Melissa's, but she ends up like snooping in the van that's supposed to be the news van for the the documentary and she's she hears voices and she hides in the van and as they're on their way to the jail <laughs> that was funny <laughs> and she scared the shit out of them <laughs> i didn't think i thought she was gonna hide the whole time and she was like bo <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> and they're both like what the fuck what are you doing here <laughs> But you know how that would be their reaction if it was on Netflix or something. Right. Um, there was a throwaway line while they were all preparing when it was just like the men talking. And somebody, I think it was Bo, said to Danny, what do you have a date with Nikki? Now that would be Nikki Wade, who we've seen from what it looked like, was in a relationship with Abe. And I'm like, did that relationship play out on screen? Did they break up on screen? Are they just passing her around? Because she's the only <laughs> um, female uh, person of color in town. Like, mm -hmm. if that's the case, that feels icky. Um, <laughs> well, that's that's what they always did. When you knew a person of color came on, that you know they're, they're going to be with the other they person. They're them with the other person of color and then... And that I think that happened basically up until the thousands. Like it happened for a yeah. ridiculous amount of time. Yeah, like way too long. Yeah, it has. Yeah. It's still kind of like it's on. It, it was on Young and the Restless, and that's probably why um, Victoria Victoria Rowell like always was fighting for against you know like them because she wanted like black writers on the on the staff and you know and they weren't having it like it's ridiculous and that I've, was seen, the 90s. I've seen throughout the years them tease victoria like heather tom's victoria and neil um right. and i think ashley and neil i think i've seen teased a few times which i would have been yes, all for. i i was all for they did they got together for a little bit not long but a little bit and then i think she left town and but when she came back like um again they kind of picked up they had like a date or they banged once or something <laughs> so they had a thing they they definitely i just feel like it was kind of it almost felt like like um sorry we're in other storylines but we're just going to get together for this episode <laughs> bang and then we're going to go back to our storylines <laughs> that's what it felt like when i was watching <laughs> but they had chemistry that i thought they were you know but yeah, I, I love eileen so i feel like a lot of people she has chemistry with but yeah, I never actually cool. saw them bang or like be together, but the, from the teasing of it that I saw, I was like, I could get with this. I like it. Yeah, they were together for a couple months. Hmm. I'll have to find out when I don't I remember. I can tell you what year because everything <laughs> blurs together. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I think this might be us leading into maybe Chris Kosacek buying shenanigans and then redoing it because of the fire. Right. Um, because it's about to look how I remember it looking, so that must be happening soon. Um, and these bad, these bad lady cops. I think there's more to it. I think they're smuggling drugs, like and like giving like drugs to the ladies or something along this. It seems like that. I see a lot of prison storylines. They're getting paid like or something. something. I don't know. I don't remember what it was. They're getting paid or there's drugs. There's something. Yeah, it's something going on that's like deeper than just like beating up Liz, I guess. Yeah. But I don't I don't know if we'll ever find out. Does it go into 84 that you know of? Or well, I guess they break oh. her out soon. Yeah, because okay, I think so. 
So I think what you read was during the escape. Ah, uh, now, now that I'm saying it out loud, it's coming back to me. During the escape, we're getting Liz out. She gets shot, and that's what causes the amnesia. She gets shot again. Oh, that, no, that's that's second. what you read. Oh no, she shot Marie. Okay, sorry, yeah. I was confused at who was getting shot. <laughs> <laughs> right, I got it. I got it. I just want to see everybody get shot. I just want to see Liz on stage singing tonight. I celebrate my love for you. That's all I want to say. <laughs> oh, I thought you wanted to see her sing the Facts of Life song. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you I was good, I was this bank. years old when I found that out. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I remember when you told me. I'm like, uh, yeah, I knew. Uh, duh. <laughs> You're like, uh, doesn't everybody know that? I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm Gloria, new. <laughs> Lori. <laughs> I'm new. I'm new to Facts of Life. Facts of Life. What are you up to on that season four? Uh, I'm in the beginning stop? of season three. I haven't watched it in a while because I started watching other things. But I'm gonna go back to it. Oh, so you didn't get to Bo's episode yet? No. Okay, it's coming very soon. I think I did tell you that. But there's yeah. a lot of soap stars on them on Facts of Life. Michael uh, Damien. Michael Damien comes on, and he honestly looks just like Nancy McCain. They both have the same exact oh, hairstyle. Really? <laughs> and I can't wait for you to get to it, even though it's probably like 1987. So you got a long time to go. <laughs> but like but it's, it's, <laughs> it's really funny, though. <laughs> um... So yeah, I don't think there really wasn't that much because there was like a lot of other storylines going on, so it was less bow and hope romance centric. There was a lot of this push and pull shit, like the he he goes touches her face, he goes to kiss her, and they like kisses he just, on the like forehead. turns away, <laughs> either kisses her on the forehead or just like turns his head. I'm like, what? What? That was annoying. And I guess um, to, because they keep saying it, see Hope as an adult now. Oh, we saw Larry Welch for a minute. <laughs> yes, Larry Welch. I did make note of that. Um, so I guess that was before he was obsessed with Hope. He didn't seem really interested in Hope at that um, time. When, um, he's going to be at her 18th birthday party, and it's a little weird. Okay. He takes, takes like, an interest in her. And, like, it's really weird because... Um, in these clips, Julie was saying, like, Bo is not the kind of guy that she sees hope with. Right. Um, because he wears ripped shirts and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So they're like, a man, like, with class and prestige. And I'm like, is that why they're okay with Larry Welch? Because he's, like, a politician? I'm like, because he's, like, 20 years older than her. <laughs> oh, is that what they actually are rooting for? It? I don't know if this is them planting the seed for that. Because I never got why they yeah. were so okay with Larry Welch. <laughs> oh, I didn't know they were for like a Hope and Larry situation. That's interesting. That'll be interesting to see. Especially now, I only know him as a villain, so I have not seen him as a pre-villain. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, it's definitely a descent. He's not flat out evil. He definitely has right. like a, a descent into evil. Um. He just kind of makes mistakes and he can't get out of them and it just he digs a deeper hole <laughs> for himself. Yeah, I have a uh, Larry. Uh, wait, where was it? Was that at, at um? Wasn't it where um, Letitia's place? Right, everybody was there. Yeah, Bo was there. Um, Bo Larry sees Welch, uh, Eugene's, um bowling sneakers and he tries to push them under the couch like Letitia was earlier. <laughs> right, because he was trying. He's trying to help Eugene because he knows Eugene's a good dude now. He wasn't five minutes ago. But he is now. <laughs> um, he was the killer last time, or so we thought at one point. Hope goes into the kitchen to either make more tea or get water for her for Letitia, and she does the the thing that Salem's known for. She lurks while Letitia talks <laughs> to Eugene in the uh, sarcophagus. <laughs> right, and that's how it ended. Right, was that how it ended on that? Um, with that, yeah, because then later on we went into like hope in the van and then we go into the jail. Oh, that was after that, right, 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 right. Yeah. So I guess she just kind of covered for it. I guess they didn't say. Yeah. Um. Oh, and then they said the lake house. So the lake house is not the Horton cabin, right? I guess they're not. different. Okay. Because I guess that's where. Remember, we were confused. At where somebody was, I forget. Or we thought, I don't know. Oh, when Ro maybe when Roman went fishing. 
Yeah, I think so. So I guess that was the lake house, I'm guessing. Maybe. Which is 20 minutes from Salem. I don't know. Everything seems so close. <laughs> <laughs> Colorado is only 10 minutes away. I, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of wish, like, in the show, like, it would have been, like, like, you know how, like, it'll be, like, Colorado would be, like, three hours later. <laughs> so, you know, like, okay, they've been driving for three hours. <laughs> because could you imagine, like, dri remember when Marlena was kind of, like, hysterical and, like, in shock? Like, could you imagine driving, like, for three hours with a crazy lady like that? <laughs> um, I miss seeing Marlena, so I'm excited to get into, like, the actual episodes yeah, I, I do too. I miss. I, I'm excited to see more of everything instead of just clips. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I'm I mean so it's fun yeah. watching them. I guess Gwen finally yeah. moved out of Marlena's apartment. Well, she must have because Roman and her got married, and then they got the house. But um, she apparently was living above shenanigans also, and after the fire, she moved out. <laughs> and I get yeah, and I guess um, I wonder when she got attacked. I don't think they mentioned it. No, they didn't. She, yeah, they didn't mention her getting attacked. Um, Maybe she didn't get attacked yet? I don't know. I don't ever remember seeing her get attacked, so she, uh, I really don't know. Uh, like, So they'll probably you know, talk about it or something. How many clips do we have left? One more set? I think, we, I think we're about ready to just hop into the episodes. The last one. Oh, really? Yeah. We don't uh, have any more clips? Uh, I don't think it's really, I don't think they're really oh. great quality and they're not really, we're not really um, missing anything. Yeah, it doesn't seem like I read. And I didn't that's why when you read that, I was like, oh, that's nice. I like that. <laughs> it's a nice clean That wraps it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, because December is pretty much um, Melissa and Pete in the cabin. Like early December. Right. And then it's like, I guess the Christmas. And then Hope's birthday, and then we're in '84. I like, I like when they were driving the van, and um, Bo and Danny are just like searching their pockets, like for money to give Hope. I guess they were gonna leave her somewhere, or like to hop a bus back or something. <laughs> that was funny. So, Thanks do we that. see how that wraps up, or we don't? The um, jail? like with the lady, yeah, with the with the prison lady following them um i don't know <laughs> honestly <laughs> i'll have to skim, uh, skim the clips um i'll send them your way just so you have them oh to rewind a little bit so um thanks to matt hey matt <laughs> he watches friend of the show um hi matt he sent the clip that I sent you of Renee going off on everybody. So now that you read yeah. about it and have watched it, did it live up to everything you hoped it would be? <laughs> it did. Um, uh, I, yeah, it was really good. I actually watched it because I was going to like wait to watch it on my TV, but I'm like, you know what? I just watched it laying in bed. I'm like, I'll just watch it now. And I'm like, all right. I, I really liked it though. It was cool. It was riveting. Like, uh, it was riveting. <laughs> it was. It was like it, um, like she really, I don't know, she really got your attention. Like, I was just like, like, it's a lot of times, like, you know, like if somebody sends me a clip of something, I'll like watch a little bit, I'll watch that later. But I actually watched all 10 minutes. I was like, okay, all right, tell them, girl. She seems <laughs> to be, she seems to be very popular with a lot of older days fans. And I wonder if maybe them killing her off was short sighted. Like, maybe, maybe the actress's contract was up and they were just like, oh, we'll just kill her. Yeah, um, I'll look into that. I mean, somebody might know, but uh, I'll definitely investigate a little bit to see because I'm curious. I mean, the actress passed away recently, like the last year or two. Right, like you would think. I, I want to. I wonder if she worked. You know, did any other soaps? You know, like you know, I'm curious about her. So I'm gonna look her up yeah. and see. She could have been bigger and had more story. I mean, we revisited that character what in 2022 with Sarah and, for thinking she was her. I'm guessing she was only yeah, I like I, I did like that they did that too. It was kinda cool. Um and it makes sense too because she was, you know, um with Tony and loved Tony, so Tony well okay. he loved her even after she would she snapped on them all. Tony's not my favorite character from like 
the Riley years, like so from the, from his return in the '90s on, I actually do like Tony in the '80s. So I'm excited to see Tony and Anna. Um, I I always like Tony, but I'm very confused about him because I don't you're not, know. You're not sure if the one you like was Tony or Andre being Tony. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably. Probably, uh, they I played so much. That everything from like '84 <laughs> to like 2008 was Andre pretending to be Tony. <laughs> right, like that's that's what I mean. Like I really don't know if I like I like Tony currently, but he's you know they're only bare minimum. They're only five times a year if that. Yeah. Um, and I get it. They're older and they might not want to work, but I, they seem like they wanted to work though. Like when I met them, like they seem like they wanted to be on. They they like knew their scenes were coming up and stuff. Yeah. Um. I you know, just yeah, hope, like I said, I don't know. With the 60th anniversary coming up in 2025, I hope that Ron can do. If Ron Carlovati is still the writer, um, that he could do for the 60th what he did for GH's 50th. As far as vets and like bringing old stories up and just like like fan service, pretty much. Well, honestly, he's gonna have to start like now because yeah. they're filming in the summer. So I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they gotta start getting <laughs> together like now. Yeah, which is kind of I think what he did with GH. I think he did. It wasn't just like the week or the month of the anniversary. He did stories leading up to it and then after it. So I hope that he does the same if he's the writer. I like I like what they're doing now with both General Hospital and Young and the Restless. They um they got um Mamie back for Young and the Restless like earlier this year and then she's back at, you know Mamie, right? Mm -hmm. She took care of the Abbots. Um but uh so they have her involved in a storyline with Jill and um um everybody that I forget right now cuz I'm <laughs> I don't I don't have it written. But <laughs> Lily and all of them, and uh -huh. um, Mate. uh, and they got Leanna Love to come back again after the actual anniversary. So she actually just came on. I think a few. Well, I'm in. I'm still. I'm forty episodes behind people. So like, I, <laughs> I just got to her. <laughs> so <laughs> this is not true. So, but I, I'd rather that. Honestly, I'd rather that instead of getting everybody back for one week or whatever. Yeah. To bring people in or maybe have them come do it like just like YNR is doing and even GH they got Rena Sofer back they got um Jane Elliott back like if you do things through the whole year that's that's what I'd rather have because then that yeah. way it's thought out they're written in storylines I I'm not a huge fan like I like to see them back for like a party and stuff but when they're not in the storyline I don't care and I felt like Ron was pretty good when he does bring people back. He usually um, puts them in storylines for a week or two. And it's usually something big that happens. Like, he does a pretty good job of that. I don't think anybody ever really just came back to come back, you know? Yeah. yeah. Which is good. Like, even when they got Car Carrie and Austin back, um, it was uh, Beyond Salem. Mm -hmm. When they got Bo and Hope back. I mean, like, I like how they brought Bo in with... Um, the Satan storyline that was awesome, mm. um, and then they they merged it into the Beyond Salem, which I thought was awesome. Like I thought they're doing great things. So I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Six well, do you have anything else to add on what we watched this week? Um, um, no. Uh, I know Letitia doesn't last long. I did read a little spoiler about her, so I don't know if we do we see her again. Um, you know, I, I never really um, knew what happened to her. I guess she dies. Oh. Well, hold on. Let me, <laughs> let, me, let me give you a little look. Of course, I put my paper back in. <laughs> uh, I was going to go on, but I thought we had more clips. So, um, all right. Let me see where I was real quick. Just find her um, with her walk in. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the line's actually on a different P. It's like next to it, but um, <laughs> all right. Uh, so, suspicion fell on Eugene, and police were after him, but his eccentric cousin Letitia 
who had a raven as, as a pet, took him in. That was a mistake. She, too, was murdered, and Eugene was taken into custody. Oh. But other women continued to be threatened. Sandy was accosted by a would-be rapist, and Pete Jennings, who happened to be nearby, was held before police by Roman. Okay. The end. So that's the end of Letitia. She was in and out. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I think I think um, the actress was Ruth Buzzy, who was like big in um, that show, Laughing. Like she's like kind of like a comedic legend. Yeah, I've um, seen things. I can't. I couldn't tell you what, but I, she's been in. Things. Yeah, she pops up in random shit. Like so, she. I'm sure it was probably just like a five episode arc type thing. You know, whatever. Yeah. So we probably saw most of it. The the one probably right after that would probably be her getting murdered. So, I think all she wanted to do was fool around with Roman. <laughs> yeah, right. At least give her a bang and then she'd kill her off. <laughs> bang for your buck. <laughs> all right. Yeah, well, I think th- that's all I got. All right. Well, thank you for joining us for another edition of Bow and Hope 1983. I think next time we cover them, we will be wrapping up 1983. So stay tuned for that. Um, As always, you can find us on all the socials at Queers and Soaps. And until next time, have a great night. Bye. Bye, everyone.